I will show you for yourself why your papa is happy. What is that, papa? That is Hans what every foreigner should have if he wants to stay in this country. But what is it, papa? Oh, Louis, you be so dumb. That, that's a privilege. It's a privilege to stay here. It shows that you belong. It shows that you have a right. It means that I am... I am... Uh, uh, You're a what, Papa? Can't you see? Papa's got a privilege. My goodness. You must have catched it when it was raining. I told you to put your goulashes on. Maybe I don't take such good care of you. Anyway, not like Mama used to. Oh, yes, my little Lena. You take good care of Papa, just like your mama, just as good, even gooder. You know, Lena, you and your mama was, like they say in America, like two beans in one pot. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that, huh? Come in. Hello. Hello, Uncle Adolf. Hello, children. Hello. Hello, Mr. Kleinart. What's the matter? For me, you ain't got a hello. I almost forgot you was here. Mm, hey, what could I expect from a foreigner? What is this foreigner business, huh? You ain't a foreigner? That's where I laugh on you. I used to was, but I ain't. Hans, Nina, Louis, tell them what your papa has got. Papa's got a privilege. What kind of a privilege? Here, yeah. look on it yourself. Ach, du Lieber! You, you, you got citizen papers, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Ludwig. Thank you, oh, thank you. Oh. Ain't that nice, huh? <laughs> yeah, someday soon I'll, I'll have one too. <laughs> oh, children, run into the other room, please, huh? I want to talk with Papa. Go ahead, children. And Lena, bring Uncle Adolf a cup of tea. All huh? right. She's just like her mother was. Ain't she, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, Ludwig? Yeah? Maybe I don't see you so soon again. And maybe I never see you no more. Now, what's the matter with you? Maybe I don't see you never no more. Ain't you going to be Saturday night by the Pinardi game? No. Tomorrow I'm leaving. I'm going to California. You're going to California? And why should you go to California? The United States ain't good enough for you? Ach, a fine citizen you are, yes? You don't even know that California is in the United States. Mm. <laughs> 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 Nana, und, und, und what, what, what are you laughing about? I got a laugh. Because you are so dumb, you didn't even know that I was making a joke with you. <laughs> All choking aside. Thank you, Lena. Thank you're you, welcome. Lena. What, what is that idea? Uh, you're going by California, huh? I'm not joking, Ludwig. What? The doctor says uh, I should go to California, and there with the dry climate and the sunshine for my heart. Maybe I will get healthier yet. Oh, what's the matter with you? You look pretty healthy. Listen, Adolf. I don't say the doctors are crazy. But you know, many a times the sick fella they give up for debt goes to the doctor's funeral yet. So? But don't it happen every day? Uh, Adolf, maybe you need a little money? Nein, danke, Ludwig. I don't need money. With all my love to my little Lena, Louis and his wife, Hans and Hans's wife, I remain as always your true friend Adolf. I do wish he wouldn't call Hannaford Hans. I don't like that name. 
It seems that Mr. Kleinhardt and your father are the only ones that call Lee Louie. Well, at least my name is the same. I'm still Lena. That's the name your mama wanted you to have. You can be Hannah Foot, and you can be Lee, but to me you always will be Hans and Louie. Pardon me, Mr. Myers is here. Uh, Lena, you go and see him. Papa will come by and by. Go on. Anyhow, he don't want to see me. Pardon me. Father, why do you let Lena spend so much time with that fellow Myers? What's the matter, Louis? Joseph is a nice boy. And he's smart. And besides, he's a fine chemist. Joseph is working on a dye now that will revolutionize the whole dye business. Father, I hope you're not financing your silly experiments. It's not silly. Then Joseph has perfected his new dye. Now, your papa is telling you all of us other dye works are kaput. You're doing all right with the present dyes. Why experiment? Ah, children. If we stop experimenting, we stop progress. And if progress stops, we all stop. Well, I believe in letting good enough alone. I won't argue. You know, your papa never argues. But you'll see. Joseph has got something good. A anyhow... I'll see, go and see him. And I'll have a talk with him. If this fellow Ma's formula is any good, it looks as though Papa's going to marry it into the family. Damn clever, these Strausses. Hello, Joseph. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Strauss. Oh, excuse me. Maybe I shouldn't interrupt you, huh? Oh, Papa. Hey, I was young once, too. You are making progress, huh? Well, I'm trying. Oh, I see. But I mean about your formula. Oh, say, I brought you over some new samples. Yeah? They turned out pretty good, too. Mm. Is that the only reason you came over? Hmm. Not bad. Not good. Not, but not bad, neither. But anyhow, I'll show them to the boy. Go on ahead. <laughs> Sit down. Look, boys, here's a couple of samples. Come on, May. Looks like the evening's going to be spent in talking about dyes and chemicals. Well, dyes and chemicals is a very nice thing to talk about. They did a lot for us. They made us rich. I'm afraid, Father, we won't be of much help. Well, that's right. <laughs> Maybe you should go along with them and, and take them out uh, and have a little fun, you know. Uh, all work and no pressure, that, that, that ain't no good neither. Oh, they'll entertain themselves all right. What is the matter with you? You don't seem to take care of yourself. Is your mind always on something else? I guess I'll not be much of a success at anything. Oh, yes, you will. Say, it would be kind of nice at that, to have somebody look after you. Joe! Are you proposing? Oh, no, no, I, I didn't mean to. But now that I have, I mean it. I was only fooling. You haven't anything to worry about. You have a big home, servants. And a father-in-law to watch everything I do. I have to sneak into the bathroom to get a little smoke. Oh, you and Lee have an ideal life, an apartment of your own. And only visit your dear father-in-law whenever you want to. May and I were talking about your father. You know, dear, I think he's getting too old to work as he does. You don't know him. He loves work. I think it'd be wonderful if he turned the business over to you and Lee. Then he could take things easy. Father will never give up going to business. He would if he thought his sons could carry on. I think you and Lee are capable of handling the business. Certainly we are, but we're doing all right as it is. We're getting a nice salary. Oh, haven't you any ambition? You want to work for a salary all your life? You should be thinking of yourself. What is it to think about? Eventually the business will be ours. Very well, dear. If you're satisfied to go on the way you are, it's all right with me. Oh, all right. I'll talk to Hannaford in the morning. But I don't think it'll do any good.
So you think your papa is getting too old? I know that's not it. But we feel that you've reached an age where you should take things easy. You've worked long enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see what Lena says. Okay. Hmm. Now, Lena, what do you say? Should Papa retire and become a loafer? Oh, you want Papa to retire, huh? No. So it shall be. Well, Joseph, what do you think? I'm going to retire and become a gentleman of, uh, of nothing to do. I go and get my pipe. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to play bridge. Come on, let's go. Good night, Joe. Good night, Lee. Lena, why is your father retiring? We thought it'd be nice if he took it easy for a while. He's worked so hard all his life, and after all, Papa's getting along in years. Yes, but the boys need him. They need his advice. Oh, he'll continue to give advice. The only thing he's giving up is the daily routine. But that daily routine has kept your father feeling so well. Don't you know that a man has to keep his mind active? What is he going to do? What is he going to think about? Usually, when a man like your father retires, his mind retires with him. I hope we haven't made a mistake. Hello. Did you never see? The fan didn't get a hello. 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 Yeah, Hans. Yeah, listen. That's me, your papa. I, I got here a letter from Adolf. In California. He's sick. And he wants Lena to come. Yeah, right away. So, please, make reservations for her for the afternoon train. Yeah, sure, she's got to go. Would I send her otherwise? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 make hurry up. Uh, quick, please, yeah. Goodbye. Lena? Where can she be? Lena! 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 Can you see that? I'm excited and Lena isn't here. Cars! 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 Did you call me, sir? Ach, du heiliger Strohsack. I'm hollering all over the place for you, and then you ask me did I call you. What do you suppose I was doing? Talking to myself? There's Lena. I don't know, sir. You was right. There was no use calling you. That may be someone. I don't want someone. I want Lena. Yes. Oh, Lena. Am I glad to see you. What's the matter, Papa? Look, Lena. I got here a letter from your Uncle Adolf. He's sick and all alone. You got to go to him right away. But, Papa... But please, don't talk. He needs you. He's got nobody but us, and he asked for you. But aren't you going? How can I go? The boys got to have me here in the business. But listen, yeah, Papa. No more buts. Everything is arranged. Hans has made the reservations for the afternoon train, so go on. Well, what about Joseph? Uh, I have arranged that, too. I telephoned to Joseph, and he'll meet you by the station. Now, please, hurry up. All uh, right, Papa. Oh, Lena, yes, Lena. Papa. Here's only the other letter. His address is on it. Uh, All right, now listen, when I get please there... Please don't ask any more questions. Hurry up, quick, will you? Carl! Carl! Carl, I'm calling you! I'm here, Mr. Strauss. Oh, excuse me. So you are here, huh? But you are never here when you should be, and when you shouldn't be, then you are. Yes, Mr. Strauss. Carl, 
tell the chauffeur to go right away, hurry up, and take Miss Lena down to the station. And, 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 and Carl! Yes, Mr. Hurry Mr. up, Yes, Mr. Carl. Poor Adolf. All alone. <laughs> Lena, dear, what's the matter? What's it all about? What happened to your uncle? Papa was so excited he didn't say. Only that Uncle Adolf was sick and wanted me to come to him. Have you the ticket? Yeah. Gee, your father said he's going to miss you. Just my father. You're not going to stay away long, are you? I won't stay a minute longer than Uncle Adolf needs me. Joseph, dear, take good care of Papa. Don't let him miss me too much. Don't you miss me too much. Oh, I won't. Oh, I mean that I'll see your father every day. Goodbye, Lena. Goodbye, Joe. Take good care of yourself. Goodbye. Listen, don't forget the writing now when you get down the hall. I got to laugh. Lena's like everybody else. She's been in California only three weeks, and look what she writes. This is God's country. Nothing but sunshine and flowers. About sunshine and flowers, she tells me. But about Adolf, she says nothing. Perhaps he's all right and there's nothing to tell. <laughs> Maybe I'm a little too anxious. That's the trouble with old people. They always think right away of the worstest. Dear father, smoke a cigar. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I do wish you'd ask him not to smoke that pipe in here. Carl. Yes, Mr. Strauss. Have a cigar. Thank you, sir. Yes. But uh, I smoke a pipe, sir. Yeah. But the smoke from a pipe annoys people. It's Yes, sir. Oh, is that all we get? Yeah. Oh, give me another piece. No, dear, now run along and play. I'll be glad when they grow up. Children are so much trouble when they're small. Yeah. And when they grow up, they are bigger troubles. Yeah. Strauss. Hmm. Mr. Strauss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? What? Dinner, sir. Who? Who? Oh, yeah, dinner, dinner. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Where are the children? Mr. Hannaford phoned. They were dining out. Oh, they couldn't come. Say, Carl, you know what we do? I keep you company, and we eat in the kitchen. It's too quiet here in this big room. And besides, if I eat with you, you wouldn't be lonesome, huh? Thanks, Mr. Sprout. No, Carl. With you, 
Ich hab Lächerte da hinten. Ist so gemütlich. Ja. Und dann... <lacht> you don't mind if I dunk, huh? <lacht> dunk? Uh, I like it myself. Ja? <lacht> ja. <lacht> Not fair, pass a second notice. No, no, I weiß that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Good, huh? Is it good? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Wollen Sie so nicht Bienen haben, ja? We remain sincerely yours. Well, well, Father. Hello, boy. Hello, <laughs> Father. <laughs> That'll be all, Miss Snyder. Hello, Miss Snyder. Good morning, Mr. Clark. How's the mama? Fine, sir. That's good, that's good. <laughs> And why are we honored with this call? Oh, boys, I felt lonesome for the smell from the chemical. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm only choking. I had a telephone call from Mr. Hoffner from the amalgamated charities this morning. He told me he called you up about this year's donation and you didn't give it. So I explained to him, maybe you want to talk to me first about it. Huh? And now that we've talked about it, you send him a check. Well, uh, Father, we decided to cut down on charities this year. Cut down on charities? Oh, no, Louis. If we cut down on anything, we cut down on things that we can do without. Charities is for people what's already doing without. I know, but if we can't give... But we are not giving. We don't own anything. We come in this world with nothing, and we go out the same way. All we've got here is just loaned to us to use while we are here. So we, in return, loan back a little bit here and a little bit there, and in the end, uh, <laughs> we're all even. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your philosophy may be all right, Father, but we feel that it commensurates with better business management to give less this year than we have in former years. What difference is this year from other years? Well, you see, we've curtailed uh, many of the unnecessary charities and have installed a new system. Mm. This thing of making donations without due consideration is a thing of the past. It belongs with the old-fashioned method. Old-fashioned method, huh? Well, old-fashioned methods, it's just the thing what made the Strauss works what they is today. All right. If Father thinks we should send it, let's do it. Sure, <laughs> Papa thinks so. Here you are, Father. What is this? That's an inter-office communication. Just give that to the cashier and he'll give you a check. So, huh? Inter-office communications. New methods. New methods. Having a good time, Father? Oh, I... I'm having a beautiful time. Good. Have a cigar. Thank you. I'm very fond of it. Oh, thank you. Have a drink, Father. Oh, yes, do have a drink, Mr. Strauss. No, thanks. I, I, well, not tonight. Oh. I just saw Mr. Strauss going into the library. He'd be glad to see you. He is so lonesome. Hello, Joseph. 
Good evening, Mr. Strauss. <laughs> I, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> What's the matter? You come to the house to do a party and you ain't dressed up? Oh, I didn't come to the party. That is, I wasn't invited. Who's got to invite you to my house? To my house, you don't have to be invited. Besides, I wasn't invited neither. <laughs> Sit down. I saw the boys today. Yeah? Yep. Well, what did I say? Well, they didn't seem very much interested. Well, don't you worry none. Everything will come out all right. I'll speak to them myself. Did you have a letter from Lena today? Yeah. Funny. I get a letter from her every day, but only the day I got a postal card with pictures from California oranges on it. As if we don't got oranges here. What'd she say? Well, she said that she wouldn't be away much longer. You know, Joseph, since Nina has left, I don't feel at home in, in my own house. Now, don't you worry. She'll be back before we know it. You miss her too, huh? You bet I do. You know, Joseph, when you ask Lena to marry you, and she says no, then you ask me, and I'd say yes. <laughs> well, I have to go now, Mr. Strauss. Good night. Oh, Joseph, what's your hurry? You just come. I know, but I have a lot of work to do tonight in the lab. So? But Joseph, don't work so hard. Because if you work too hard, you'll have to retire. Then you're going to be an old man like me. Don't you worry about that. I'll never make enough to retire. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, Mrs. Strauss. Good night, Joseph. Be careful. Don't fall in the letterbox. <laughs> That's a boy, huh? That's a boy. I'll give you girls a nip what is a nip. This is where I keep my private stock. Mm -hmm. Young society matron runs her own speakeasy. Mm -hmm. But why do a fade out when you want a little drink? Oh, you've heard of people suffering from too much mother-in-law. Well, I'm suffering from too much father-in-law. Well, why not move? Me move? Why should I? Shut myself up in an apartment like me? Oh, no. Not little Myrtle. If there's any moving to be done, let my dear father-in-law do that. Well, here's mud in your eye. Ooh. We off? Good evening, Mrs. Strauss. Good evening, Mary. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Strauss are in the living room. Oh, thank you. Hello, Papa. Good evening, my children. <laughs> this is a pleasant surprise. Anything the matter? What should be the matter? If Papa calls on his children, should there be something the matter? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, of course not. Come on in. <laughs> and how are you this evening, my dear? Fine. How are you? Oh, fine, thank you. That's nice. That's nice. Here, Father. Huh? Sit over there in the easy chair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> ah. <laughs> well, Louis, how is everything? Oh, everything's fine. I had a wire from Hannaford. He'll be back Wednesday. He's trying to close the Keystone deal. That's good, sir. I hope he'll get it. You know, children, there is a reason that I came over. I want to ask you if maybe you are too lonesome here, I will come and live with you. Is there anything wrong? No, no. Only you know the old house is so big. I get a little lonesome. And it ain't the same like it used to be. Hans and Myrtle, they give parties. And Papa 
is too old for parties. So I thought maybe if you don't mind, I come over and stay with you. Why, of course, Father. We'd be glad to have you. What we may. Why, well, yes, of course. Thank you, my children. Thank you. I tell you, he wanted to go. I didn't say a word to him. As a matter of fact, I didn't know he had gone until May called me up a few days after he left. Hello, Hannaford. Hi, Mart. Oh, hello, hello, Lee. Lee. When'd you get back? I just got your call. I want to talk to you, Lee. I just got back this afternoon. What's it all about, Lee? What's happened to Father? Well, Hans, I'll tell you. Papa and uh, Myrtle don't seem to hit it off so well. Oh. I don't know what's the matter with him. Of late, he's been acting kind of strange. Everything that Myrtle and May do seems to get on his nerves. You know, Hans, the girls have got a good idea. Over on Madison Avenue, there's a home, well, I mean it's a, a kind of a hotel where old men live who've retired. The guests there are men of father's age. Out there, he can have these pinochle games and talk to the old fellows and... Now, don't misunderstand, Hans. It's not charity. The girls have looked into it thoroughly. You uh, pay them a lump sum, a kind of a donation. And afterward, you give them so much a week. I think it would be great for him. Wake up. You're sleeping at the top of your voice. Says here that Wall Street traded in over five million shares yesterday. What? Wall Street traded in over five million shares yesterday. Oh, what did the giants do? Well, I'll call you. Hmm. What's a match? Kruger made millions on him. Yeah, but look where he is now. <laughs> I remember when you came here two weeks ago. I knew you right away. And was I surprised? Why should you be surprised? My children wanted I should go to Europe. Here it's quiet and peaceful. And for the few years that I got, I like it quiet. So I told my children I'd like to come here. And did I have to argue with them? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. By them coming, you can always tell it's Saturday. Here they come. My two sons. Always on time. <laughs> they should be late yet. That's the Strauss boy. Maybe when they get old, their children will come here to see them too. I hope. Yes, Father. Hello, Louis. Hello, Father. Hello, Hans. <laughs> sit down. No, no, sit still. I, I can get another chair. Oh, what? I have to get my medicine. Mm -hmm. Well, how are you, Father? Oh, I'm fine. Fine. <laughs> and I'm having a good time here, too. Mm -hmm. oh, I knew you'd like it. <laughs> Did you hear something from Lena? Yes. She says she'll be home most any time now. Oh. Did she say how Adolf is? No, she didn't. No. She don't tell me neither. <laughs> By the way, boys, you know, Joseph, he comes here every day to see me. And what do you think? 
He has perfected his formula. And it's something fine. You know, I think it would be a good idea to take him into the business. He's got something good. And it should make a lot of money. No, we're not interested, Father. We'll stick to our present eyes and not experiment. But it isn't an experiment. Joseph has perfected it. And it isn't like Joseph would be a stranger. You know, someday I hope that he and Nina... Well, Father, we'll have to be running along now. Oh, so soon? Yes, uh, Myrtle's giving a dinner tonight. Oh, that's nice. I hope you'll have a good time. Thank you. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go so soon. Oh, yes. You see, they are so busy. And besides, I don't like them to stay too long. Because all they talk about is that I should leave here and come and live with them. Yeah? Yeah? Look, here comes my friend Joseph. He's a fine boy. You're telling me? Hi, Mr. Cohen. Very well, thank you. How are you, there, young fellow? I do. How are you? How are you, Mr. Strauss? Hello, Joseph. I'm fine, fine. And it's like sunshine to see you. <laughs> are you feeling, Mr. Johnson? Oh, I... I'd be feeling fine if it wasn't for this old fellow always trying to make me believe things that ain't. <laughs> Honest, Joseph. He doubts every word I tell him. Now, now. He's the biggest doubter in the whole world. Oh, yes. Oh, don't believe him. Oh, oh I must. I, I, I have to get my medicine. <laughs> yes. He's a big faker. He don't have to get medicine. No? Uh, he just says that so we can be alone. Sit down. I just saw the boys leaving. Yeah. Did you say anything to them about the formula? They, they are too busy. Always too busy. Yeah, Joseph. They used to listen to me. Ask my advice about everything. We were close together. But they have changed. They are different. Well, perhaps they are busy. No, Joseph. I have lost my sons. Well, Miss Lena. Hello, Carl. It's good to see you. Thanks, and it's good to be home. It's Lena. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have some fireworks with our breakfast. Mr. and Mrs. Sprouts are having breakfast. Oh, Carl, will you pay the taxi? Yes, Miss Lena. How are you, you old dumpling? Fine, and you never look better yourself. Hi, Myrtle. Hello, Lena. It's good to have you back home. Thanks. I see you fell off your diet. Mm-hmm. Eating's my strongest weakness, you know. Well, Papa certainly must be the retired gentleman. Doesn't he get up for breakfast? I'll go up and wake him. Oh, Lena. Why didn't you let us know you were coming? I want to surprise you. I love surprises. And won't she be surprised? What can we tell her? You'll have to figure that out. Too early in the morning for me to do any thinking. Oh, 
Papa. Why, uh, Father isn't home. Isn't home? No. You see, Lena, Father moved. Moved? Yes. He wanted to live alone, so he moved to a hotel. Papa living alone in a hotel? Where? The Franklin on Madison Avenue. But what happened? Why? Why, what? nothing happened. He just wanted to live alone. Papa living alone in a hotel. Honest, miss, I didn't take it for a joyride. I didn't know how to find it. Keep the change. Five bucks. Is Mr. Strauss in? Mr. Ludwig Strauss. Yes. I believe you'll find him sitting uh, right over there. Excuse me, I, I have to get my medicine. Yes. <laughs> You'll excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down, darling. <laughs> it's good to have you back. And I need you. I'll never leave you again, dear. Never. No. Why are you here? What a foolish question you're asking. Why am I here? You know your papa is getting old, and old people are funny. They like it quiet and want to be alone, and they get under young people's nerves. You see, all these other fellows, they're just like me. They like it quiet, and they want to be Alone. Oh, you're not alone. Why, I'll never leave you for a minute. No. By tomorrow, we'll be in our own little place. Just you and I. I'll keep house for you. And it'll be nice and quiet, and you can do just what you want to. Say, and I still know how to cook. <laughs> for your first meal, I'll make you some of that nice sauerbraten. Oh, sauerbraten. With dampfludel. <laughs> I made it for Uncle Edo. He just loved it. Oh, oh I forgot. Uncle Adolf. He's better. He's gone. Oh. Adolf. Gone. Well, maybe it's better to be dead. Then suffer. You were with him till the end? Yes, Father. And now, you stay with me till the end. Yes. Don't you talk like that. Hello, 
Did you see Father? Of course I saw Father. And I'd like to know the reason for it. Reason for what? The reason why he isn't here. Well, didn't Father tell you? Yes, he told me. He told me that he wanted to be where it was quiet. That he made young people nervous. And that he didn't want to be in the way. Well, I hope he doesn't blame me. I didn't have anything to do with it. He didn't blame anyone. On the contrary, he said he was happy there among old men like himself. Don't you see, Lena? It's what he wants. He told you so himself. You're right, Hans. That's what he told me with his lips. But his heart told me that he's a broken, disappointed, disillusioned old man. Oh, you're exaggerating things. While he and I see him every Saturday, he's never complained to us. Of course he hasn't. He isn't the kind to complain. He wouldn't tell you what you really did. But I will. First, you convinced him he ought to retire. We're no more responsible for that than you are. Father left it up to you. I know. I must have been blind not to see through your scheme. First, you got him out of business, and as soon as I left, you got him out of his home. And now out of your life. Everything he had, he gave you willingly. His money, his home, his business, all of it. But you robbed him of the one thing in life he cherished. His faith. Look at me. I didn't have anything to do with sending him to the poorhouse. Oh. So you know it isn't a hotel. Now, see here, Lena. I've listened to you before. Now, you listen to me. You can call it a hotel if you want to, but that doesn't change it. It's a poorhouse, an institution, where he must go to bed and get up at the ring of a bell. Where he must eat what they placed before him. Where he must follow rules and rules and rules. Where he's humiliated in a cold, heartless prison. And his son sent him there. His son. My brothers. Oh, I'm ashamed of you, all of you. You're not my brothers. You're a lot of cold, selfish, heartless swine. Well, that's not going to affect my appetite. Come on, let's have dinner. Now, don't be an old washwoman and talk so much. I'll see you Saturday. And when the other fellas ask you where I am, you tell them I'm out. Lie to them. You know how. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You teach me. Uh, go away, you old faker. <laughs> go on, Dad. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, Goodbye. are you leaving us? Oh, no. I'm just taking a walk with my children there. I see. Uh, oh, wait, wait, I forgot. So, are you really going to leave us, Mr. Strauss? Yeah. Well, I'm very sorry to see you go. Well, you know that. You know what I mean. Oh, sure, I know. Say, hey, you've got a nice place here. Now, you know all the arrangements. You don't tell anybody that I leave here. And I come back every Saturday. You know, that's the day when my boys come to see me. And, oh, yeah, the checks that my boys sent to pay for me, you keep. Maybe some poor fella wants to come in whose children can't afford to pay for him. So you use those checks. But goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Strauss. I'll see you Saturday. Until Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Come on, Dad. We'll get a taxi cab. Oh, no. Taxi cabs cost money. We're celebrating today. But you didn't get married without telling Papa. <laughs> Come on, quit your kidding. Hmm. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, 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 boy. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. I'll goodbye. be back this afternoon. Goodbye. 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 Oh. This is a beautiful place. <laughs> and there's one thing more we want to show you. I saw it. It's the prettiest bedroom I ever saw. <laughs> no, no. Something else. Something more besides? Mm -hmm. And all for you. Yeah. Sure. Come on. Oh. There you are. Oh. What kind of room is this? This is your office. What would I do with an office? Giving me an office is like giving a dead dog a bone. What good is an office without a business? I am a retired loafer. You're not retired anymore. You're getting back into the harness. Lena, what are you talking about? Tell us what she means. Just this, Mrs. Strauss. My formula is registered, and we're going to die business. Come on now, sit down. You're the head of the new company. Yeah. Huh? All right. I am the head of the new company. 
But will you please tell me what the head of the new company is going to do for money? Oh, don't you worry about that. We have a silent partner with plenty of money. What? We got a partner with money that don't say nothing? Who could be such a fool? Lena. Lena. You got money? Where you get it? Uncle Adolf left it to me. Adolf left it to you. That's more than your papa did. No, Lena. I don't take that money. That's yours. But listen, Papa. No, and I don't listen. And you can't give me your money, neither. But I'm not giving it to you. I'm loaning it to you. And I expect a big interest. In fact, we've decided that you get 50% of the business for your knowledge. Joseph gets 25 for the formula, and I get 25% for my money. Isn't that fair? Yes. Yeah. That's fair. But I don't take it. Let Joseph go into business. I don't know anything about business, but you do. Mm -hmm. My knowledge is old-fashioned. Nowadays, they do business modern, with in-the-office accommodations. No, Joseph. I'm too old for business. You're not old. Yes, I am. Oh, well, of course, if you want to make yourself old, nothing will do it any quicker than being idle. I tell you, Mr. Strauss, what you need is business. Something to occupy your mind. An office, a desk. Show the people in the business world that you're not through. Who said that I'm through? Hans and Louis? Well, I'll show them. You're right, Joseph. That's what I need. Business. All right. Start right now. Now, the first thing we do, we got to give the company a name. Joseph, are you an American citizen? Oh, yes, I was born here. Good. We call it the American Dye Works. Say, that's a good idea. Well. Now, listen, children. Don't let anybody know that Papa Strauss is back in business. This is my office, and here I am the head. You'll have an office downtown, where you'll be the head. So we got a head at both ends. Now, Nina, you're the silent partner, so don't say nothing. Papa will do the, the talking. Joseph, the first people you go and see is the Bivats company. He's a hard man to get to, but you get to him. Then there's the, the Keystone, the Metropolitan, the Fast Silks Incorporated, the United Imports. You'll start them. I'll finish them. Yes, sir. The last two months, the American Dye Works have taken six of our best accounts. And here, take a look at their circular letter. Why use foreign-made dyes? Keep the wheels of our own industries turning. Keep our own working people working on home products. <laughs> if that isn't waving the flag, I don't know what is. Well, it may be waving the flag, but it's getting results. Seems to me it might not be a bad plan for us to try and merge with those flag wavers. Merge with them? I thought of that long ago. For weeks, I've been trying to find out who's behind this firm. I talked to Myers, and you remember, Joe. He's their chemist. They're using his formula. Yes, I remember him. He wanted us to take it. All the poor sap would tell me that some old fellow was behind the firm whose aim was to keep the home fires burning. Cancellations from the Brevert's company. Last week it was the Metropolitan. This week it's the Brevert's. With the, el, with the el, uh, uh, elimin elimination of the processing that is necessary with other dyes, our prices become correspondingly lower. In the middle comes the bell. I'll only be a minute. Joe. Hello, Dom. Papa's in the office. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I got some good news for him. So early in the morning? Sure. Heavy business, too. Good. Well, how's the head of the American Dye Works today? Oh, I'm fine. 
Look at your pants. They're shrunk. Oh, they're golf pants. Say, I closed that brief art deal today. You did? Yes, sir. That's fine. But tell me, how did you get near enough to that Brevart? He's such an independent. Why, well, Brevart and I play golf together every Saturday. And old boy, he hates to lose. So today, I let him beat me. <laughs> Good gracious. New methods. Saturday. Face it. What? I can't find it. You can't what? find what? what? Face it. What'd you lose? What? My hat. Your, oh, your hat. Oh, Where did you find my hat? I gotta have my hat. Oh, your hat. Where'd you? Face it. Where'd you? Anybody see my hat? Well, where'd you put it? Would I ask you if I would know? There's my hat. <laughs> I got to find that hat that I can't go. Papa, what is the matter? Now, why are you so excited? Why am I so excited? I just now remember the day is Saturday. And Saturday is the day when the head of the Strauss Dye Works pays a visit to one of the heads of the American Dye Works. Joseph, you got to find my hat. Here's your hat. Do it over. You had it hidden in your pocket, sir. Wait, I got it on. Goodbye. So long. <laughs> well, Hunt, how's business? Not so good. Oh. We just lost the Brevert business. Oh, that's too bad. Maybe you want... I should go and see him? Maybe I could get his business back for you. No, I'm afraid you couldn't do anything with old Brevert. It don't cost nothing to try. No. No, it would be useless. Well, Father, we must be leaving. Oh, oh. When you see Lena, ask her to call us, will you? We never see or hear from her anymore. Sure, sure. I will, I will tell her the next time I see her. Well, goodbye, Father. Goodbye, Louis. See you Saturday. Yeah. Goodbye. That's so long. Now, be careful. Keep well. Best man win. Well, I, I suppose we won't be seeing you again until Saturday, eh? No, not until Saturday. And will I have a good argument ready for you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are we going to meet it? It's got me. I've tried everyone I could think of. How about Lehman of the Merchant's Trust? That old Shylock? I'll try it. Can't you do that for us, Mr. Lehman? Sorry, Mr. Strauss, but your statement doesn't warrant it. Our bank would be very, very glad of your business, Mr. Strauss, but uh, we can't start off by making a loan of that size. Well, but why come to me? I haven't spoken to your father for years. He's very much in need, then. He thought you would do it. Hmm. So, your father, Braut Ludwig Strauss, sends you to me for a loan. I told him years ago, he'll have to come to me. Well, it's only for six months. Ludwig Strauss had to come to me at last. All right. You tell your father to come to my office tomorrow morning and apologize to me. And I'll arrange for the loan. But you've got to figure some way out of this. Now, my dear fellow, I'm only your lawyer. I can't do the impossible. There's already a mortgage on your house. The only thing I can suggest is that, that you talk to your sister. She's inherited some money. I don't know how much, but you might ask her. Oh, I, I couldn't do that. Why don't you stay out all night? 
I'm sorry, dear, but I couldn't help it. How'd you make out? Did you get it? No. I tried every one I could think of, but it was useless. We're lickly through. What on earth are you talking about? Just this. In 48 hours, the Strauss Dye Company will be thrown into bankruptcy. Bankruptcy? Yes. We've made a mess of the whole affair. You mean we've lost everything? Everything. Chosen, tell me, where did you hear it? Maybe it isn't so. Maybe it's only a rumor. I heard it at the bank today. They're calling a creditors' meeting tomorrow. Quick, Joseph, open the door. Never mind. I'll go myself. Oh, oh come Mr. in, Mr. Star. Butler. I've been waiting for you. Have a sit down. Okay. Well, it's good to see you in harness again. Uh, this should be a happy day for you. Uh, You've accomplished what you set out to do. I understand the Strauss Dye Company is going into bankruptcy. No, my dear friend. That isn't what I wanted to accomplish, and it mustn't happen. That's why I sent for you. You are my lawyer, and I want you to offer a proposition to the members of the Strauss Dye Works to merge with the American Dye Works. Merge? But the Strauss Dye Company is worthless. It hasn't any assets. No, that's where you're wrong, my friend. They have two very valuable assets. My sons. Mr. Butler, it's very hard for a father to lose his sons. And I went a long way to regain them. You remember what a good book says about a prodigal son? He demanded his inheritance. His father gave him all. And after he squandered it and was in need, his father went out to meet him. My boys might have been unwise, maybe a little unkind. But after all, they are my sons. Very well. Come in, children. Now, your proposition is... Uh... Well, here is the conditions that I want. Hannaford and Lee Strauss are to be active members of the combined firms to be known hereafter as the American Dye Works at a salary of $10,000 each per annum and 10% jointly of the net profits to be paid in preferred stocks of the American Dye Works. If this is satisfactory to the counselor, my clients have already signed the agreement. I think you boys are very fortunate. Have a cigar, Father. Oh, no thanks. I'll go and get my pipe. Oh, I'll get it for you. I've got it all fixed. Oh, darling. Myrtle wants to talk to you, Father. She wants to tell you she's sorry. <laughs> what has she got to be sorry about? Now is the time that we're all glad in this family. No more sorry business. Here you are, Father. It's just as you like it. Tied on the bottom and loose on top. Ain't that nice? Hmm, am I getting swell? <laughs> Mr. Strauss, hmm? it is ready. Yeah? Well, children, you will have to excuse me. <laughs> Your father said if I asked you to marry me, and said no, to ask him, say yes. Don't ask Papa, ask me. Hmm, Hal, you're improving. You don't two times deep to my one time shallow. 